just myself, and I'll let everyone else introduce themselves. Um, I am Tim, and I am Pixel Wanker number five out of four of us. Figure that one out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mitch. I'm from England. God knows what I'm doing here, but here I am. I'm Ian. I am not from England, and uh, I'm Pixel Wanker three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scott. Sober. One year. Three days. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steven and I'm a pixel winker. Welcome, Welcome Steven. <laughs> Let it all out. Wake all the pixels. Uh, so today we have uh, Ian here. Um, Hello. Ian is a co-founder of an animation studio with myself. and Long-time listener, uh, first-time follower. Follower. <laughs> Talker. Either way. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to Mitch. Mitch, what are we talking about today? Um... I think we got a bit of film. We got a bit of games, possibly. Yeah. Uh, we got some cool stuff. Cool. Yeah. Oh, go for it. Oh, and we've we also got, got a loot crate that we're going to open at the end of the show. Thanks for the folly. <laughs> <laughs> Real life, like that was my skull. <laughs> <laughs> so, lads, what is new in the world of? Star Wars trailer. Star Wars trailer. Star Wars trailer. Star Wars trailer. <laughs> <laughs> the suspense was killing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ian wet himself. We haven't talked about anything all day because we know we're going to talk about something tonight. Have at it. All right. Yeah, what well, you want to dig into? You want to start with like going from play by play? Steve, leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to like do too much like in-depth like analysis of it. That'll ruin it because you'll find stuff. It's you there. think so? Oh, I think so. Oh, do I, are you kidding me? The second they put a director on it, like J.J. Abrams, you look at his history, he's got a, a laundry list of things that he accomplishes with his films, and that formula is clearly relevant in the new Star Wars trailer. Well, I don't want to pay attention True. to his formula. I'm not going to watch any of his movies, and I'm not going to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> he never existed. Alert. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Kirk's dad dies in it. <laughs> I mean, what? well... What? They're connected? <laughs> I thought you were going to say they're Canadian. <laughs> Mitch, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm glad they got Peter Mayhew to play BB-8. Oh, I thought so. I think, the, I think the big question in the trailer, and this isn't going to spoil anything for Stevie over here, is uh, where's Luke? What's happening with Luke? Not in the poster. Not yeah. in the poster. Not in the, well, his mm. hands in the trailer, maybe. Unless that's just a ro that's that's C-3PO totally his hand. <laughs> Just his hand and nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually his hand from the first movies. They just kept it. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder where that went. Like, after it fell out, like, did someone get hit in the head by Luke's hand and, like, <laughs> collect it? <laughs> if if I there. remember right, in, in some of the extended universe, which is, like, completely void now because Disney, like, wiped it clean, um, somebody actually uses that, and they clone him after he's killed on, like, a planet. Like, I guess they cut, really? like, some landing stuff, and he, like, goes into lava and dies because he's, like, sucking his X-Wing. And this is all if I remember right. I mean, this is back to, like, third grade, so it was a long time ago, but... Yeah, if, if I remember right, he's totally dead, and they use that hand that's on, um, what's the, the planet that's below Cloud City called? I can't remember. Bespin. Bespin? Yeah. Land City. <laughs> <laughs> Land City? Land City. Lando City. <laughs> Lando City, really. <laughs> Welcome to Land City. It's just that's land. <laughs> so how did you guys feel about it? That's why they call him Lando. The trailer in general, I felt, um, basically is probably going to be the pace of the film. Starts off slow, mysterious, quiet, builds up, bit of revelations, oh my god, who's who, da, da, da. they all get together somehow, there's a big old action scene, various little skirmishes in between, and a final climactic scene, and then a resolution. And that's basically the way the trailer plays as well. If you watch yeah. the trailer, the cuts are slow, you know, right towards the end, you've got like quick cuts of like, you know, milliseconds of frames of stuff, you know, and it's just gonna... You mean it's gonna have a story arc? Yeah, <laughs> a traditional story. I think it's that, in a way, they're going to play it safe um, with the storytelling and just, yeah, they're just going to, you know, everything's going to be sort of by the numbers, but it's going to be good design, good characters. That, that's my thoughts. I think that's just sound. I mean, it, the trailer looks like it's already focusing more on the characters than it is on the effects. You know, thank goodness the poster only has two colors of lightsaber in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a big plus for me just to see good and bad, black and white, you know. Taking yeah. back to its roots a little bit. Why do you have to go black and white? <laughs> 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 We're gonna have to talk about that part of it too, because there's that whole yeah, that's a movement challenge. against. Like, oh really? Against like Finn? Yeah, but yeah. against like they're saying it's like an anti-white movie. Let's let's get oh. through how we feel about the trailer. Okay. And we'll get yeah. into the. Re oh wow! I didn't know retarded. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so privy. <laughs> yeah, as as it kind of rolls out though, you know, I I'd have to disagree with you, Mitch. 
Um, Not really. You know, if there's anything that J.J. Abrams has done with any series that he's tackled, it's he's kind of unconventionally tackled storytelling, which is one reason what makes him stand out. I think that you know he may start with a climax and then eight. We know that there's going to be a nine and it's going to keep rolling because they have to keep the movie rights, right? So from a business perspective, why um, why start with a, a whimper that builds to a roar when you can just start with a roar and then have it peter off into a, a hang a cliffhanger? Well, he, so. I, I I do think there's going to be um, certainly some sort of you know red herrings and there's going to be some cliffhangers in it. I got a feeling it's going to be a bit like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where the first one has some action. When you're watching it, this is great. But it's nothing in comparison to the fight scene in Two Towers, and that's nothing in comparison to the fight scene in Return of the King. Like, it, the, the, the action kind of builds. In each film, it just gets more and more epic. But Mitch, it starts out with fireworks. Gandalf comes in with his, like, magic fireworks. And, <laughs> and that's, that's the, the big bang that scene. Ian's talking about. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some cataclysmic <laughs> event that we know is just going to trigger some kind of... You know, J.J. Abrams may try to echo what Luke Skywalker's beginning was in Episode Four mm-hmm. by showing up the the, the poverse, you know, um, diamond in the rough kind of element, but I, I, that that seems a little too predictable, can't be. He does like to echo his themes. Don't get me wrong, but when it comes to this film, I, I think we're going to get a little more punch than we expect. I hope so. I think watching the trailer, I didn't actually think too much about the story. I didn't even like watch the scenes that I kept, I only watched it once. Everyone's like, oh, I'm watching it over and over get again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A but, consummate professional. <laughs> but I, I like the sets. I like the scenic vistas and like the, the way that the ships look. I like the way that like the girls walking around through the ship. I, I like that aspect more than anything. You like, like the I, feel, which is yeah. wonderful that they've gone back to actually doing it looks, sets, right? Yeah, it yeah, looks even amazing. better than, than I think like Practical. the four through six. I think the sets just look amazing and you look back at like one through three and you're like, what were they thinking? Like, why would they even... It's all green screen. Yeah, yeah like, well, like the like, ships look like like polished like right out of like the, the thing. It's like, no, like Star Wars is about like Real like this is like this looks more real like base ships that are kind of torn up and beat up. They're they're fighting ships for God's sakes. Like you know like like yeah. You have to beat them into submission. I mean, so it's like like yeah. give it some wear tear. Give it some like the insides of the ship where she's walking through and looking through the pipes and stuff. Like I I chew up that stuff all over. I'm like oh man I love this. I I think it's gonna be great. You know. Yeah. Um I'm excited about that. He loved it so much he watched it once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved it so much I watched it once. All right let's yeah. hear it. The biggest fanboy that ever boyed. Well, I, I wouldn't even say that. <laughs> <fan>. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't know what boy. it was, man. That trailer, like, so when I watched it, like, I was waiting through Monday Night Football, which I watch football anyways, but I was, like, like waiting, you know, and I was, like, already on, like, the movie si- movie website so I could get my tickets as soon as the trailer was done. And, like, it started playing, and, like, I don't know why. I just started getting the chills, like, right off the bat. And I can't even explain it. Like, I didn't get emotional, but I had, like, tears in my eyes. Like, That's emotional. <laughs> like, well, but I wasn't feeling, like, I don't know what I was feeling. I was just, like... So stoked to see like exactly what you guys are talking about yeah. the uh, like the practical effects, but the practical effects help so much when they have like the like the special effects you know with like the the CG like because when the ships are on screen you're not even thinking about it anymore because everything else just looks like so good it's just like it's like this perfect transition so I'm ecstatic like I don't think I could be more excited for like a new Star Wars movie. Rhea Tar Captain Phasma. Well. Well, what you were saying too, like you think it's going to go for the bang because they have these other two movies to explore. Yeah. But J.J. Abrams isn't directing both the other movies. No, but the story arc is pretty much set in place. I mean, if you look at how movies are produced and created, there's they've already got well under the way thoughts of what's going to go on. Are you ready for my big major prediction? Oh, Steve, are get you ready stay to jizz in your pants. Nope, I'm out. Steve is standing <laughs> and and leaving the Wait, room. Wave me in when you're done. <laughs> Really? Sorry that I trust you. You're too smart. This is speculation. This is purely speculation. He's so actually John leaving Snow the room. Yeah. That dude's dead. No. <laughs> spo- spoiler alert. This is just gonna take two seconds. Oh. Uh, little He's puppy dog eyes looking in the window like a child right now. In the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> so my big prediction is they're gonna kill Han Solo. I, I, it's just you. You look at J.J. Abrams. He, he replicates themes. Look at the two Star Trek movies and the success of their formulas. You can pretty much lay them back to back. Just offset the times of timing of events. You take the original Star Wars trilogy. Han Solo's getting up there. May not happen in this film, but it's just it's just an, it's a it's a heart ripper waiting to happen. So you think Han's gonna die, not anyone else? He's gonna die solo. Or do you think lots of other people <laughs> die, like all the other cast? Um, 
I don't think they're going to do a mass genocide like they did in Attack of the Clones, where they wiped out the Temple of the Jedi kids and stuff. But we all have a the heart. Young no, or, the young or the ladies. beginning of Transformers, the uh, 80s show where all your favorite icons got destroyed. Well, that's the thing, is that <laughs> I already had an emotional connection with those characters. And so when they got to that point, it was ten times more potent. When they obliterated all those people in Attack of the Clones, there was no emotional connection to any of those characters. So why did any of us care? Han Solo, we care about, and he's getting up there. I hate to say it, Harrison's told you know, well over 75, I think. Sure. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time for them to pull the plug, and Harrison's going to have a big, grandiose send-off with this character. It's just what film? Maybe in this one. I don't know. But that's going to echo the, the death of Obi-Wan, right? So we can predict from J.J. Abrams' storytelling previous to, I think, this one. That's my big prediction. So. Do you not think it's going to be Luke? Because Luke's he's going to become the Obi-Wan kind of character, and then he's going to sacrifice himself so that these new, this new generation can then train up. And sure, yeah. and he's already, I mean, obviously missing from the poster, from yep. the, mo- the trailer, from, I mean, you haven't seen. This is true. This is well, true. what about this idea? Maybe they're not going to have Le- uh, Luke in it at all. What if Luke's not even in the movie? But then second or third movie, he comes in like, Bat out of hell, like. Riding a motorcycle, two like machine gun hands and like grenade launcher feet, and he's just like, ah. Uh, are you done, or should we uh, get what? Steve back in? Hold on. Uh, what, yeah, hold on. One more. No, 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 no. Hold on. Um, we, choosing Luke as the obvious death point is too obvious. You've got you've got a replicant, you know, the story arc there that is pretty much playing in the speaker of our face. If they go for that, fine. But I think that's kind of. That's why they kill Wicket. But then again, if you look at the Star Trek films, too obvious. you know, they're a good kind of reboot. Yeah. But they are a bit by the numbers. There's nothing really too surprising in them. Like they, they are kind of just like general narrative, like there's nothing Luke you know. Luke, I believe, will be the cliffhanger for the film. That's my prediction. Is that we'll get to the end of the film, because we know he's in it for a cameo. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we get to the end and that's when Luke steps in and that's what's gonna launch the huge marketing campaign for the second film is Luke's involvement in the next one. But I don't think his death is going to be the triggering So you think, like I was saying, like he's going to be like not in it mostly and then no, pop we'll in right at the end like, I surprise! Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> that like, that'll it's, be a huge surprise. It's me! <laughs> Luke is post-op. <laughs> I've, I've just been redoing the drapes in the other room! <laughs> Forgive me for being politically incorrect, but you know, he, he, he may be the, yeah, he may be the Bruce Jenner of, <laughs> of, of the of the Sarlacc universe or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Should we uh, bring Steve back? Yeah. We're, we're, okay. Uh, Come in, Steve. Steve. <clears throat> so while uh, Steve's in, um, you know, Ian predicts that Snape killed Dumbledore. <laughs> I don't even care about Harry Potter. <laughs> That's a lie, and you know it. <laughs> you love those, those characters. Those movies did get better, but I only read the first book, and I was like, I can't get behind this kid. What? Say that with mm-hmm. covering up to the tattoo of the lightning bolt on your forehead. That's different, bro. <laughs> I believe in heroes. That's the Flash, right? <laughs> yeah. It was just poorly done. It was supposed to be on my chest. I fell asleep and he put it on my forehead. <laughs> what about the round glissos? That's a glissos glass. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that, yeah, so that's the breakdown. But I think the trailer was strong. Uh, again, emotional because we're focusing on characters. I think that was the potent part is that we can see that those are actual props being used. We can tell the difference. Yeah. People can mm-hmm. tell the difference. Yeah. We haven't got to that point yet. No. We can also tell the difference when George Lucas just gives up. or goes on a drunken stupor either which one goes first (laughs) that's my favorite thing is like people being like super nervous that Disney got the rights it's like did you not see the prequels what Lucas did to it It, nobody's gonna do that I worried that they were gonna ruin Howard the Duck listen if Howard the Duck (laughs) came back that's a movie I'd pay to see at the end of Guardians yeah yeah, come on the the first Howard the Duck had duck tits right at the beginning of it right what what movie has no for some reason I just wanna say woo (laughs) <laughs> the Disney store that didn't get aired. <laughs> um, no, so let's talk. Do you want to talk about the action figures that came out? Did anybody pick up any of those? We talked a little bit about them yesterday. Uh, last yesterday, time. Yeah. Last time. Last time. We, we went over the whole um, 
uh, Chrome figure. It's not Chrome. Yeah, no Chrome Captain Phasma. Boo. Yeah. That's my but that's, big that's just a but reason yeah. for them to sell you a Chrome one later. So you'll yeah, buy it's gonna happen. I guarantee you, there will be a Chrome <laughs> Captain Phasma. George figure. Lucas is twisting his nipple, waiting for it. <laughs> 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 Yo, know, here's the thing. If the majority of the people. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that episode. <laughs> Is it, is, you know, <laughs> people do paint miniatures or whatever. I'll just pick it up and I'll primer it myself and I'll make it chrome myself. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. really, you're gonna you're gonna paint it yourself, dude. It's 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 a it, they messed up on it. I've got a chrome looking three PO. Come on, don't short me on the chrome phasma. <laughs> so. What do you guys think about the uh, the boycott Star Wars? Have you guys looked into it at all? Have you guys no, seen what happened? Stuff? No, no, break it down. This. Boycott Star Wars. All right, so people are saying that it's like an anti-white movie because Finn is one of the main guys and I guess the guy that Oscar Isaacs his real name his real last name is like Gutierrez or something I guess he's like Colombian or something the girl looks white to me but they're like saying it's anti-white by bringing in all these like other ethnicities this is like Fox News reporting on this you know it sounds like it right I actually yeah I actually heard that there was uh, a couple guys on Twitter that are just trolling somebody and of course as our world is today half the people took them seriously and now it's a news story like I, I feel that's probably where it came from, and and now you've got a bunch of people crying over, you know, two kids in their basement just laughing at the world because yeah. they tweeted something. I hope, because I feel like every other movie's been whitewashed beyond all. Like, we're gonna get a Ghost into the Shell movie, and Scarlett Johansson is going to be playing the major. It's like, <laughs> no, she's she's Japanese. Like, <laughs> it's okay to have like the other ethnicity play that. Like, just because we're white doesn't mean. We need to see white people. It's Japanese, yeah. just the other ethnicity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you really like the thing as well. Do you really think this is going to gum up the works? Like they've already got everything in motion. The film is basically done. Mm-hmm. They're just waiting on the date. You know, these are two massive franchise powerhouses: Disney and Star Wars. You really think this is going to stop them? You know what like, I did. It's just, they're just going to release the film we, as usual. We like, saw them marketing. That's all. Yeah, they exactly. Did. How many more people now yeah. are talking about it in one fashion or another? That weren't talking about it because there wasn't this whole guy depression. Like Johnny Depp played Tonto, right? Wasn't it Tonto? <laughs> yeah. well, why it's was like, that, like maybe maybe Disney's like this is their whole thing. Like this is maybe their Disney's whole whitewashing. <laughs> yeah, <they're> Disney. <laughs> I like how his name was past tense. I Johnny Depp that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's the crazy thing is I don't, I, I don't think it needs any more like publicity. Like people are going crazy for oh, yeah, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a film you wouldn't have to advertise whatsoever. I mean, yeah. this, it's like we were talking about our last episode, doing a Mario movie. You wouldn't have to advertise that. Yeah. Nintendo would say it once, hey, there's a Mario movie out, and they would just make a boatload of money, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Star Wars, it's out. Everybody's going to see it. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. You're going to see it. It's been around for the last 40 years, yeah. you know? Well, and, and like you know, Mitch was saying, it's like you have these two powerhouses, right? Disney and Star Wars. But the reality is, it's Disney, right, to begin with. I mean, the mastermind mm-hmm. behind everything, the audience that drags behind it. Not like Star Wars didn't have an audience already. I, 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 I you know, not to pull on my little soapbox, but I, I want to, I want to cry. Monopoly. I'm sorry, yeah, but like yeah. Disney freaking owns everything. And for <laughs> sure. any other studio to develop any characters, original ideas, right now, if it gets big enough, Disney will eventually own it. Microsoft tried this back in the early 90s, and they got shut down immediately from monopolizing. And you look at all the properties that Disney owns now. That's like, it's got to be well over 70% of the entertainment market share goes to some kind of Disney property. And they're starting to leverage their films against each other. Like, they can, you know, shift the dates of their films so they play off each other and strengthen the, the viewing of another. Or shift the release dates of another so that more people will be targeted at a certain time because they pull another property mm-hmm. that they own. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's like, that to me is... I, don't land on boardwalk. You know what I mean. <laughs> 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 Sorry, some FBI agents just come in wearing Mickey ears and they whisk me yeah. away. So. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, you're coming with me. <laughs> it's like Marvel and Star Wars alone. That's like a juggernaut. Like, what are you gonna do? That's crazy. Yeah. And to think they've got it in a video game form. Like, God forbid that Fox loses the rights to X Men. It's like I want it, but on some level, it's kind of like good that they don't have x-men like back at marvel because that'll just get ridiculous like you think so oh yeah like, but, I, but it would be so cool if x-men came back to marvel oh it will be but, <laughs> but but here's the thing like think about how cool they made the avengers 
Nobody gave a damn about the Avengers before the movie started coming out. I didn't know anybody that was an Iron Man fan before the first Iron Man movie. Now everybody's like, oh, I've been loving him since I was a kid. Yeah. I know his song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it says, I am Iron Man. <laughs> and the only reason anybody watched it was for War Machine. I doubt. Like, that show sucked, and Tony Stark sucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I challenge that. You the cartoon? Really the cartoon? Oh, the cartoon. Oh, I thought you were just saying, like, like, Tony Stark no, sucks. No, like, no. Oh, yeah, I don't like Tony Stark. He has a tower made after him. <laughs> As a character? So, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he he is like the epitome of what I think like Americans are moving towards, and Captain America is like what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be the, these really good people who help people and want to do what's right, but it, we're all like into ourselves. We're like, yeah, I'm the I'm the rock star. Everybody look at me, like Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. Well, this okay, this is a great shift because now we're talking about Time Warner DC basically dropping Civil War versus Batman versus Superman. Right, and we got these two major like movies that are about to go head to head, right? And you're talking about like the Civil War premise, right? Do you go, do you go the boy in blue, or do you go the man in the iron armor, right? So, w- with with that breakdown, what's really funny is that Time Warner owns, you know, those two own properties, but they were getting ready to drop Batman, Superman, against Marvel's Civil War, and it's because Marvel Marvel held back the release dates of Civil War. Did you guys know this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so what happened is that when Marvel withheld that information. Um, DC was like, okay, there's a little window opening here. We'll put Batman Superman on this date, right? And then Marvel's like, mm, Trump, we're going to put Civil War here. And, and DC immediately shifted the it. dates of Batman Superman to a whole other date, which means that DC believes that that movie is going to be better than Batman Superman, right? Why would you Why would you not go head to head if you didn't believe you're going to be able to contend with it somewhere? Yeah. I, I well, because see, even if you I, contend with it, you're going to be hurting your own your own gains. Like, like let's say that you're still you still get like the majority of the audience. Like you're still going to lose, we'll say forty percent, right? They're not going to see it, so it's like you're still going to be hurt if you throw it in there. And I mean, to be completely honest, like let's look at what Marvel's done and what DC's done in terms of like theatrical releases. Marvel's like destroyed DC. DC's got like the Dark Knight, and th- and all that did good, but it hasn't done Marvel good. And they're like coming out with so many movies now. It's like I don't really care to see a movie about Ant Man, but I'm going to because they've got me invested. And what they've already yeah, built, it's kind of like know? reading the comics. Like you, you want to watch Ant Man because you don't want to miss the next episode. Well, yeah. here's the thing, though. Ant Man is one of the original Avengers. I mean, we're talking like one of the original founding yeah. members of the Avengers, mm-hmm. and he just kind of got shifted to the side a little bit. We got Hulk, we got Thor, we got Iron Man, you know. But you know, then Ant Man comes up and they're like, well, I guess we kind of better do something with because they guy. don't they <laughs> yeah. don't know if they can actually make him work. Like they they made him work in the movie, but. I don't know if they were totally committed to that idea when they first started doing like Iron Man and Thor and stuff. I think they're like, oh, Ant Man, let's wait and see what audiences think of the Avengers. Let's sure. see what audiences can pick up before we drop that bomb because that's kind of mm-hmm. even even Ant Man. The movie was awesome, but come sure, on, it just like wasn't as he, well he, known. he he can just control all the ants with this. Yeah, you know, like, it's like. I believe that the suit can make you shrink. Fine, I'll, I'll give you that. But you can control herds of ants now. With it's funny <laughs> that you nothing. believe a guy can shrink to the size and be super strong. <laughs> and that's okay. But he can't control ants. Well, it's the cold water <laughs> theory. I, I just walk into cold water. <laughs> or that a man can build a suit of armor, armor and fly and shoot repulsor blasts. But yeah, yeah. But and man, then, change the shape? No way. Like, back to the point. Yeah. Like, they made the Avengers cool yeah. when nobody read them. Yeah. If they bring X Men, everybody loved X Men. Like if if Marvel gets those rights back, it's like they'll start putting the X Men in like their Disney Infinity game. I haven't heard anything about the X Men. It's like it's gonna be yeah. ridiculous what they can do at the at, like the box office. It'll be better than what the, they did with the Avengers. I guarantee it. Yeah. So so you gotta ask for the faction, Captain America, or Iron Man. Take your vote. Do you guys know understand the difference between the two factions? The, are you talking mm-hmm. about like the Civil War yeah. factions? Yep. Which yeah, basics. Uh-huh. So so let's let's have someone. Color-coded. We haven't heard you from Mitch. Right? So, uh, it's been a while since I read it, but Cap is anti-Reg, yep. right? And then, okay, yeah, I'm anti-Reg. Yeah. I'm all about vigilantes and... Oh. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of interesting, because, like, you reveal your identity and you give up, you know, your yeah. personal life. Mm-hmm. For the same token, I mean, you get a steady paycheck. And so yeah. what about yeah. you? I'd totally be anti-Reg. <laughs> you would. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to the guy with... The, all the Mario tattoos, <laughs> the tube socks, <laughs> the shaved head. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> and the, the, the Adventure Time shirt. <laughs> this guy's way out there. No. An- anti-registration, man. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Plus, Captain America as a leader. How cool is I was, that? I was, yeah. I was at Solid Comic Con, and they, they asked Captain America that in the panel. He said, what would you choose? Would you be anti-reg, you know, or would you be, you know, uh, Tony Stark's team and stuff? And he said... 
in the movie, obviously, he's Captain America, so he chooses Captain America, but he's in real life, he's Tony Stark's side. Really? He would agree with way You more. heard that here. <laughs> <laughs> Officially heard here second. But don't <laughs> yeah, I read it too. I was like, Damn. Yeah, but I mean, like, I think, I mean, he explained it a bit, and I, I wouldn't, I would still say I would go anti reg too. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been professionally animating long enough. That steady paycheck is pretty nice, but <laughs> I have to say that uh, I'm, I'm capside too. Despite the fact that nobody would be able to identify me, the f- that I'm only covering my eyes, or us, you know, my, my, my hairline, <laughs> and my voice wouldn't change except for unless Captain America came back like Who are this. you, Grover? <laughs> <laughs> I throw my shield near, and my shield far. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, yeah, kind of under the weather, but yeah. So, th- I, yeah, I think, I think we've got a full stamp of approval here. We go over the... <laughs> Blue, well, so. we've talked about the Star Wars trailer. When are we going to get a remake of Black Hole? <laughs> 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 I think your silence pretty much sealed it. Right? <laughs> the audience was feeling the same way. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, and so that kind of skews into like gaming. Has that has any of this translated into the games? Have anybody tried any of the Captain America games? Well, or? I actually wanted to say something before we, we go on to that. Oh, yeah. uh, that you were talking about the monopolies with Disney. Oh, is, thank you. I think Lego has actually made one of the smartest moves of any toy company ever by getting the licenses to do all the different things. All the di- oh my god, it blew my mind. Me and Mitch were in Toys R Us the other day, mm-hmm. and just all the characters that they have licensed is I- insane. How, how, do they, how, how do they get that? How do they, they just I say we're going to do a Lego a version of this? And it's like they had a clause back in the day when they did the, the Lego game, the original Lego game, that they mm-hmm. could use the, those characters in whatever media. Um, as long as they're Lego versions. As long as they're Lego versions. It's funny because it's satire, so it's great. It's mm-hmm. it's fu- you can be funny with it. You can have like even some good dr- you know drama with it, but then it doesn't really relate back to the source material too much, and you can just do whatever you want. You know, there's no, it's kind of like no holds barred. You know. Yeah. yeah. Haven't you heard the next move of the Lego like corporate what they're gonna advance into? No. The Lego Bible. <laughs> I hope you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lego Jesus. Yeah, he's just got like blocks on his hands where you can put them on a, a Lego. Oh program. my god. <laughs> when, when you get to Lego Genesis, dude, they'd start Lego creating everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's like out there, he's like, did you just turn that red block into a green block? <laughs> my Lego water to Lego wine. Two blocks of every size. <laughs> oh, dude, and then, you want, then that Lego series will just become perpetual because it'll be Gad another Lego. It'll be Gad. <laughs> <laughs> and now they, it doesn't matter because they, they create the creators of the creators of the creators right? so, <laughs> that's their next business move I think it's genius yeah um, Lego the religion yeah. Lego <laughs> the religion <laughs> uh, if that happens uh, licenses you can contact me for costs <laughs> Legoism <laughs> that's right <laughs> the first church of Legoism <laughs> I, that's probably got to exist already it's yeah, built it's built brick by brick <laughs> <laughs> you send also brick by brick too so you have to be careful <laughs> brick by brick <laughs> Uh, you get torn down brick by brick. Forgive me, Father, for I have bricked. <laughs> no, but you guys, have it, has anybody played any of the latest Lego games? Well, not the latest one. They have their own Toys to Life Now mm-hmm. product that's yes. on the shelf. Dimensions. Over. Dimensions, yeah. And that's what we're Dimensions. looking at. I've been thinking about getting it. Oh, it's, come on. It's really Look expensive. at the quality of the figures alone. Dude. They're shoddy. They're incredibly thin. The, the here's the thing. Poor, like, the everyone, the hey, like, you know that the plastic is poor just by looking through the package? Have you held the package, dude? It's like, you might as well hold like a package of styrofoam. It's Ian's, just, like, Ian's like over there that's like, about well, the like, like, Lego brick, like, break the... <laughs> But you can tell, like, when you hold, like, a third-party Lego versus, like, a real Lego, you know the quality of, like, the real... Have you ever stepped on one in the dark? Have you ever stepped on <laughs> yeah. a Mega Bloks? Yeah. Mega Bloks definitely were cheap, right? shitty Legos. Like, I, I had I, I had Legos as a kid for the longest time, and then my mom's like, here's your, your gift, you know? It's like, Mega Block? <laughs> I can't saying, even like. Well, make I can't eat that. Where's my easy bake oven? I, yeah. <laughs> God damn it, mom! Not lay mega blocks again. <laughs> I'm melting these down in my creepy crawl machine. <laughs> no, I wanted to hear what you were gonna say. Um, I'm a sucker for minifigures. Like they, like I love the Back to the Future set. The DeLorean's really cool, but the minifigures is where it's at. Yeah. And the Ghost, I got the Ghostbusters set as well, and those are awesome. And to see like. Portal characters, yeah. like as minifigures, or like uh, what else have they got? They got um, 
Doctor Who characters. Yeah. Don't they have like, more? They have Doctor characters? Who on Lego. Yeah, they got oh. Doctor Who. Yo, I'm, 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 gonna re- I'm gonna recount my statement because I just realized I made a big like mistake. What's that? So the Lego things. I, okay, I, I strike I, I that from the books. Right. <laughs> um, but it's the uh, the Sega pl- uh, Sony Play Motion or is it Sony? No, the Play Motion stuff is next uh, to the Sony Lego. Play or yeah, the little ball and the stick. No, 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 right. no. They're like action figures of like the like Avengers characters and stuff. Play motion. I and see. Yeah, we we will pose. They were the bigger. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's thing. the crappier ones. I, okay, the Lego ones came in the boxes with the themes of the different films. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Now my biggest, I guess, retort on that. I'll say after your thoughts, but I want to say that okay, I'm cool with that. Okay. But it's the because play motion like I say, stuff I have a problem with. But, the yeah. just and really like the cost of just buying those minifigures online anyway is about that much if you just to buy the set, you know. And this is like different brands that. I've always wanted to see in Lego form. And if you can play like a portal level, but like in Lego, how That's cool is amazing. that? Like, you know. But here's the thing. Y- you've got you've got one figure, okay? One vehicle. And in order to utilize the vehicle in another form, you have to break it down and rebuild it. Right? Mm-hmm. How long can, does that take you to do? And then to put that back in the game. So now you buy three sets of each one of these so you can have one of each vehicle no, ready no, to no, go. No, 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 no. It's just the base. Right. You don't so it the, doesn't matter how you built it on top. Yeah. It's you know, just the base that matters. You know what the next level in okay. Lego technology is going to be? It's not the Bible. L- no, it's not the Bible. Let me let me toss the Bible out the window. Sorry, <laughs> Bible. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's <laughs> the Bible screams. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, it's no. It's like Lego Amiibo, Amiibo, Amiibo. That's, what we're that's exactly about, right? what it is. But yes. but here's here's the deal. But here's the Amiibo. Amiibo. He's like, I've, I've got a prediction. No, this is gonna happen. You guys are like, but, but, we've been Legos. talking about but, that for five so minutes. So that, that's so that's what you guys are talking about. But like, so can you build them and actually like we were talking about last time with hacking them, like being able to change? No, the they have not thing on got top, to that. But if they, could that's what they seriously, need. yeah. If you can you pull, build, you build your your thing, you build your castle. Load it into your game, and then your castle's in, you know, that Minecraft, Lego, Minecraft. I and think. you know yeah. what? I bet, okay, Lego, listen to me. You can do this by putting <laughs> yes, chips Tim. in each one. Thank you, Lego. <laughs> by putting chips in each one of your blocks, right? Just measure the distance. And measure the distance. And you can have it be like the Lego movie where, you know, he's not a regular builder, and he builds these insane things, and who the hell needs, like, a double couch? But the couch can be in the game if you want it to be in the game, and anything you build can be in the game, and that would be amazing. Hell yeah. That but would be... Think about cost and, like, how you would you execute that. Mm-hmm. You know, because if the, you build with blocks... The cost of brick would be... Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Like, even if you You'd just... only need to buy one set of those bricks, right? <laughs> yeah, but how yeah. many bricks do you need? All of them. It's like right. once, <laughs> like Legos are overpriced as is. The last yeah, time I yeah. looked, it was like hundred dollars for the game alone. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's some shit right there. Like, I don't want to buy that. <laughs> yeah, and thirty dollars for a character pack. Cha-ching. Yeah, on top of your like console that you bought already. It's and and look at the target demographic, right? De- Legos obviously targeted older audiences because look at the. I mean, like you said, you have a Back to the Future set, you have a Lord mm-hmm. of the Rings set, so now the collectors are obviously getting older. Yeah, my um, so, uh, Shilab and have you seen that Lord of the Rings Lego set? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, you yeah. can actually get a golem and a yeah. shilob as well. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, I had the spider one, the spider, the tax Frodo set, and then the one with uh, Gandalf, and yeah. he has his little wagon. So what I guess what I'm saying though is that the Legos are aging with their demographics, so they're obviously targeting people that have the money, you know. Sure. Like I do think they've maintained consistency though. Oh yeah. Like it's always been the same kind of idea behind it. The bricks are kind of the same. You get different unique bricks here and there, but for the most part, it's always been that. It's been the most consistent child's toy, I think. Yeah. If you look at all the toys that have always changed over the years, like Lego's always been that kind of yeah. go-to toy, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna switch subjects because we're talking about nostalgia, you know, like things of our childhood. I saw Goosebumps this weekend. Did anyone else see Goosebumps? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my <laughs> lord! How you, you know, but you know what though? R.L. Stein took home mm-hmm. like the Emmy for like like best series like a year or two ago. Like the th- the thing was like I didn't. And I know everyone probably on this podcast thinks I'm like totally a dick or like a weirdo or something, but like usually, yeah, I, like because of all the things, the all the kid. things I've said, but <laughs> like, but like it wasn't. I'm normally like pretty picky with movies. Like I have ev- uh, something to say about everything, but it wasn't that bad. Like if you take it for just a fun Halloween movie, like my sure. wife and my That's friend's wife were like, "That was awful. I can't believe we paid money for." That. I'm like. I can. That's what it was. You didn't see Goosebumps. You never saw the TV show. It's hokey. It's cheesy. Like the books, they're kind of hokey. Yeah, they're exactly, not necessarily super yeah, scary. Exactly what I thought it'd be it's too. pretty much bar none, Jumanji, Hocus Pocus mixed together. That's Goosebumps. 
<laughs> first season of Buffy is Goosebumps. Like, right. yeah, it's as close as you can get. <laughs> yeah. I kind of think that's how you need to go into movies. Is like, go in, like, knowing what you're getting into. Like, when I went and watched Jurassic World, I knew it wasn't going to be smart. <laughs> I, I knew it was going to be as dumb as could be. But there's still, like, you can still enjoy a movie for yeah. what it's supposed to be. You know, it's not going to be something groundbreaking. Like, if you go to watch Transformers, you're not like, oh, man, there's going to be some smart stuff. It's yeah. Like, it's going to be stupid. Brain off. Enjoy, like, the explosions. Like, Well, in, Go- in Goosebumps, like, we, we all know the premise from the TV, co- the commercial stuff. It's like R.L. Stein's books come to life and stuff. And then, like, in the show, I'm watching it. I'm, like, waiting for this kind of, like, payoff to find out how that happens. And Jack Black's just like, I wrote child stories as a child. And then all of a sudden they came to life. And I'm like, what? That's a co- total cop out. You, you just told me what I, I knew. But, like, I didn't think that was the story. And he's like... But then I was thinking about, like, well, what else do I want? Do I want him to be, like, Arl Stein, like, the monster hunter who actually found these monsters and then caught them in a book? Like, I'm like, no, that's a dumb story, it's a too. Like, yeah. He's just out there catching monsters. <laughs> He's got <laughs> a magical <Catching> pen. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, that's a stupid story, too. So I'm like, no, Scott, just sit, enjoy it for what it's worth, have fun with it. And it was a blast. Like, if there's, some, there's some fun little pipe bits. There's some definitely stupid bits. And definitely some predictable stuff, but it was fun <laughs> overall. I thought I would go. I'd watch it for Halloween, like a, as a little fun Halloween movie. It kind of sounds like your brain was like kicking it, like in the middle of it. And you're like, "No, shut up! I know it's stupid. <laughs> I'm trying to enjoy my money." Like, <laughs> so I gotta ask the, 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 the audience question, right? The obvious one was it better than the books? Better than the books? No, because the books, your imagination takes a hold, and it's whatever you, you feel like. I actually, when I was a kid, I read The Shrunken Head a lot, which was n- obviously not in the movie. It's not a popular book. But I liked that book as a kid. I thought it was fun. I thought yeah. it was n- not necessarily super scary, but I, I had a blast reading it. And, um, you know, it's not a great book, but I had a blast in my mind, like, creating all the s- situations and reading it. And, like, that's the whole point of reading. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. You're never disappointed necessarily with whatever you came up with. That's why books are so brilliant you I know i mean? use that phrase i had a blast in my mind <laughs> <laughs> got the t-shirt right here <laughs> you've also been busy oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. Aside, yeah. From the, aside from the loot crate waiting to be open i know it's sitting there um no i went to the zelda symphony of the goddesses oh <laughs> symphony of the goddesses <laughs> take the right <laughs> Symphony of the Goddesses. <laughs> um, no, it was amazing. Like, I was watching it, like, the only thing about, like, is amazing. I was, just, I was like, blast listening to the, the full symphony, doing the, all the old nostalgic games. My wife hadn't really played the games, so she was just, like, seeing, you know, seeing this for her first time, and she was just, like, what? Like, blown away, like, that there's just this much. It goes everywhere, you know? Like, Zelda is, like, it. it you know, they're, they're pirates in one in Wind Waker. They're, you know, fighting, like, as, uh, you know, um, Lord of the Rings type of, you know, environments in, in other areas. And then sometimes it's cartoon, you know, super cartoony. And sometimes it's, you know, so, or scary, like, with the, were- the werewolf, you know, Twilight Princess and everything. And so, like, all these things were just amazing to see all these games just kind of, like, like, smooshed together in one giant big performance of amazingness. But... There is a butt, <laughs> and it's sitting in the seat. Um, <laughs> Two T's. It's, it's, I, they were showing the gameplay, which was great. I'm like, oh, this gameplay is fun. But they didn't, like, edit away, like, the, you know, like, controller stuff, like pressing the A and B buttons in the corners of, the, of like, Majora's <laughs> Mask and I, stuff. I don't think that would like, ruin my experience. It, that it, would it just bring it back It didn't me. ruin the experience. But then I started thinking, I'm like, man, how cool would this be? And I guess it's probably an animation geek thing, but, like, how cool would this be if they gave, like, individual studios like each game like your Majora's Mask like take this run with it your you know Twilight Princess take this run with it and each studio has their own style they take the same gameplay that you're playing like the exact same way but just animate it like nuts like crazy <laughs> cool like I like don't one, think so dude I one, think is, one is, one is yeah. like but no I, th- I don't think so like I think you're trying it, to play on the fact that these people already played the game and you're like you're showing them what they've already experienced. I think if you were to have somebody else animate it, that would ruin it much more than press triangle. I think you, I think you, you bridge it together by showing the actual gameplay, and then like Link like strikes down, and then it, like the animation like blows out of the the hit, and like as then he's just like playing, and it, but it's like the fully animated version. Like I imagine, 
I guess I'm nostalgic towards like Fantasia and stuff. Sure. The whole idea for Fantasia was that basically it's a traveling road show that they play these nice, you know, artistic, you know, done animations with a real symphony and they take it around to people and cultrify them. Like that's kind of the point to, to cultrify. cultrify them. <laughs> you know, word. <laughs> and, and, and that's, and that's basically the gist of this too. They're, they're bringing, you know, old school video games to the symphony. But when I so why can't we bring when I like art and crack animation? open an old game and I'm like, oh man, look at this PS2, I like blow all the dust off of it and like it's so much fun just to like, oh man, this was the UI back then, or this was the controls. Like yeah. and it's like, oh yeah, I remember the map sort of goes left here and it's like, yeah, there it is and, and there's pickups here. Oh there they are. Like that that's part of the fun is like just all this flooded nostalgia for me. So I get, I can see why yeah. they left in just gameplay clips. Plus it's easier. For them, just to, sure. of know. course, yeah. It's the purity of the nostalgia. It's like you don't need to like, like people love Final Fantasy VII, and that game looks like shit. <laughs> it's, it's not you can literally pour that to the Legos, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> Dude, don't Lego Final Fantasy Legos. Seven. Legos is <laughs> way Fantasy better than that. But, but that's the thing is like, people are cool with it looking bad. We loved it when it looked bad, and yeah, graphics have come a long way, but we still appreciate kind of what it was. And for nostalgia. You don't create brand new for nostalgia. Well, like not necessarily. With the keep, old. keep the nostalgia. Keep like the games going, but like, like transition some of that into some like really fun, not concept art, but like concept animation art. You know what I mean? Like, like let it, let like let people really breathe some life into it. Or even I think it'd be even cool to show like some like fan art and like um, that people have done like would be totally nostalgic not necessarily t- specifically to you but like that whole era I don't know about like you but I read Nintendo Power all the time I love looking at the fan art in Nintendo Power <laughs> sure. I always wanted to be picked to be you know in there but I you know well, they had never had the, the guts to send in my art you it, know it was like on the envelopes right I mean you could yeah. draw on your actual envelope and then they would show an image of your envelope with the art on it yeah, yeah it was sweet like that, yeah. so I but think that would be really cool and nostalgic too like if they brought that aspect of mm-hmm. like to the gaming yeah I'd community. have to agree with Scott because I, I think that one of the smartest moves that Lucas ever did with the Star Wars franchise. You know, people were so worried about it being pure or whatnot. The second that he let Yoda appear as like a hologram on stage, and as soon as he started letting Yoda bounce around on stage, and they made all these toys, and all of a sudden he's on a toothbrush. And the second that Lucas started letting go of those characters and letting everybody else have like creative interpretation of it, it like manifested into this eight times of a juggernaut of awareness and markability and personal interpretation. You know, and, and Nintendo holds onto its properties incredibly tight. I mean, we saw what happened mm-hmm. to one. Uh, recent Kickstarter campaign of ours that you know maybe we'll talk about later, <laughs> but but it, it was if they would let people take hold of their characters and run with them and be able to you know it's kind of like the whole question of the conventions. I mean you go to a lot of conventions, Steve, and, and at these things I know recently they announced that you can draw our characters and you can have ownership on them as long as you don't put our brand on them. So you can draw Spider Man sell for five bucks, you can draw Batman sell for fifteen bucks, you can draw Hawkeye and sell for thirty bucks. But the, the second they have a problem is if you put the Marvel logo or DC logo on your prints. Because then they see that as basically your marketing or being represented by yeah. a brand. Mm-hmm. And you can make as much money as you want on that, but Marvel and DC are, are slowly getting away from that too. They're letting everybody kind of own their characters and run with their own variations of it. They want that because yeah. that's the way it bleeds over into uh, um, audiences they can't reach. And, and so, like what Scott's saying, you know, if they let that happen, to like the, you know, let animators and let companies take their own versions of these characters and play with them. Um, it, 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 yeah, you do teeter on going to the dark side, so to speak, you know, Whoa. you know, the, where you don't want your characters to play. But the same token, you know, there'll be a lot of new visions and creative uh, uses of those characters that nobody would ever anticipate before. Yeah. And, and expand that character beyond its own limits. And so. you're not going to ruin the, I mean, yeah, there'll be like purpose, like drawing gross things, but like, you're not going to necessarily ruin the... It's the first thing Scott goes for. So. <laughs> well, of course. Well, that was the implication there, but like, you, you're not going to ruin the character's like sellability by giving the community the freedom to express their love for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and the, and the characters are just as for the community or the audience that's out there, the, these characters are just as real as Marvel envisions them for them. Like, it's it's personal stories. You know, like all these stories harken to like real experiences for people like I had a friend who recently his wife just passed away from cancer and he is like I can't see Guardians of the Galaxy anymore because of the whole bit at the beginning and I was like that's that's sad but like you know it does harken to the fact that like these are these are close subjects to everyone like all these all these are real to the people that watch it and they should be able to express themselves however they want to watch it you know sure Mm mm-hmm 
I mean, I mean, how do how do you how do you feel about this? Like somebody, you've got a, a, a fantasy universe you're developing right now mm-hmm. with a bunch of unique characters in it, and they're really fun, awesome looking. You're doing a great job with them, and, and as you're putting out this out there, you know, you go online one day and you see all of a sudden that somebody has created just as much art as you have, if not more, of your characters in this world living and breathing. Now your world is just getting going and coming and and, and expanding, mm-hmm. and somebody else has emotionally taken it upon themselves to invest all that work you know, on the side, what what do you do? I mean, is that something that you feel threatened by or is that something you let grow on its own? The only thing I would want from them is uh, is a copy of all of it. Like one <laughs> copy, like, because I think if you, if you can create something that people are like super inspired by and they want to like, like jump into, like, I don't care, you know? It would just be more like, uh, like send me a copy. Like I want to, I want to see what people would create of something, you know, I've spent like 14 years so far working on and it's like not even really out yet. But yeah, like I just want to see like a take, like their take on what like I've I've spent my time like building, you know. Sure. Like even just watching Mitch like work on like the 3D model today is like really really early in, but like just seeing kind of like the the corrections he's making to kind of like some of the the mistakes I made is like super exciting to me. Like like I can't even explain. It. I'm just like this is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, so if so, if somebody else were to like like just like even when when we were doing the trade, which I still owe you for. Um, no like your take on that character, I love, man. It's it's literally on, on my desk at home. It's oh, on really? top of all my papers. I I've looked at it almost every day. Oh, jeez. Since, because I, I just before he goes to bed. <laughs> I hope so. No, no, that's his picture. <laughs> it's that, <laughs> that actually on my ceiling. Gotcha. <laughs> I thought that's what we were talking about. You are a pixel waker. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some pixels that I have. That no, no. <laughs> Thank you, but yeah. no. Yeah. So it, I mean, in, in the very real sense, I mean, I've I've seen I've had trades, you know, of art, and I've seen other people's renditions, and like I get nothing but excited. So I, I can't imagine ever being like, like let's say like, if I'm lucky, it gets like one one tenth of what Harry Potter or a hundredth of Harry Potter. If if somebody if somebody does, I'm so okay. that's a great point. You know, you you create a character that people naturally gravitate to and start running with their own variations of it. I mean, why would you stop that? In today's market, to be able to push that on your own, it takes so much time and effort and money yeah. to just. To, to introduce a character, let alone hold on to it while you're trying to do it. Mm-hmm. If you can create a character right off the bat that people just start running with, mm-hmm. then, then you run alongside them. You don't you don't try to cap them and then and then try to make them come on board. You, you empower them, I mm-hmm. think. You know because it, it's it's uh, it's hard enough to build a character that naturally inspires that in other people, and to let alone want to create their own versions of it. But um, but believe in it so much that they want to invest their own time into it. I mean, that's that's all. That's the most valuable thing I believe that any of us have yeah. is yeah. time. That's that's mm-hmm. the most valuable asset that anybody has is time. And I think honestly, time's our most valuable asset, and what all of us are looking to do more than anything is to inspire people with what we're doing. Yeah. So if we can inspire people with the time that we take to put into what we're doing, that they want to put their time into it, uh, I think everything that we're doing is is well served. I feel like we need to like edit like sweet piano music into this. Guys, let's get real with pixel anchors. <laughs> <laughs> We're all like that sentence makes less sense. <laughs> 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 we're we're all trying to like we're all artists on some level you know we're all trying to convey a story and like what is art I feel like whatever it is at the end of the day you're trying to convey an emotion whatever it is you know and if you can convey an emotion to the point where they're like it, it resonates that well with somebody that they want to pick it up and move forward like that's freaking awesome I mean and I mean if you look at like from a business like standpoint that's free marketing you have somebody who's like like out there just like no this is from you know like for me it would be the warforge like i was stoked to draw this like they're literally marketing for you for free and that may even if it just draws one eye you know well you know? did you say the warforge the warforge the warforge <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> well, well well the thing is that, that like then that goes back to i guess let's let's real quickly star wars like mm-hmm. the guys they're saying that it's racist or you know yeah. uh you know the so That's they're they're marketing. they're only adding the yeah. marketing the yeah. free marketing to the yeah. situation. Exactly I mean, what Tim said. I guess it's an art. You know, it's definitely it it you yeah. know it's it's Whining the own thing. About things on Twitter is an art. It's an art. These trolls are huge artists, and I'm a mm-hmm. big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're ex- they're expressing their their feelings about something, even whether it, anyone cares or thinks it's valid, is I guess to everyone to click on. 
Yeah, yeah, is we'll trolls a derogatory term? No, I mean, is it is. I mean, is it like ginger? I mean, is that <laughs> state? I'm sorry. Why you gotta throw that out there. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> you cold-blooded bastard. Look at my beard, dude. I've, I've got. It's black, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Racist. I have, I have three ginger hairs on the left side. You can't see over here. <laughs> <laughs> I sprout the gene, dude. Well, I've got black hairs on my chest. So well, he knows that. We could He's be not, family. He knows <laughs> and, and I've got a bald head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that it's time for uh, Scott. To open up yeah. the uh, loot crate drum roll. Yeah. People's ears are probably like <laughs> pounding. <laughs> Sorry. By the way, I. It's loot upside crate down, should, but they can't see that. Loot it's crate fine. should like sponsor us, I believe. Like. <laughs> <laughs> this episode isn't brought to you by Loot Crate. Yet. But but Loot Crate, you should come on in and sponsor us. These are the official keys of. Uh, <laughs> what opening are you, a this. janitor? Look at that thing. <laughs> Holy crap! How many cars do you own? <laughs> Anyone's that opens. <laughs> <laughs> I like how one of your keys is a Slim Jim. That's true. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I, I have to step into the Slim Jim. <laughs> um, okay. Was All right. It? All right, let's find out. Let's find out. Oh, you know, you're you know right about one prediction. Use you know condoms. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a box of used condoms and cubic hair. It's got loot paint on the side of it. <laughs> there goes that chance at a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> we, we might do no, it. No. Use condoms? No. <laughs> no. Loot crate, let me talk to you. Loot crate. Don't worry. Scott, bring it real. We'll be sexy. <laughs> okay, so we What's got... What's this one's theme? Do you What's know? The, I have no clue. Oh, okay. So, first thing off the bat... Got a t-shirt. Ah, uh, Bill and Ted. Oh, oh nice. that is awesome. <laughs> and, and it's a baby blue. Well, and you guys know they're they're making another Bill and Ted, right? Are they actually going to do it with like Keanu Reeves and yeah. uh, whatever his yeah, face that's is? That's what I'd read. They're, they're bringing uh, George Carlin back. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, like C- oh. CGI George Carlin? I hope so. Like, and he's <laughs> angry as ever. No, with the technology today, dude, they put like this wind tunnel at the base of his windpipe, and then they can like vibrate the cords exactly so he sounds like he's still there. I mean, it's amazing. It's just getting morbid. This so <laughs> I, think, I think we'll have to post this stuff online. We'll yeah, take pictures of it or something. We'll so put it on the website. It's, uh, it's Bill and Ted, and it says, be excellent to each other. And awesome. I think it's a way of living. It's really a Tao, right? You follow yeah. that as a way of life. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's my mantra. And <laughs> uh, just so you guys know, the website oh. is pixelwankers.com, and we'll have it up on there. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Yeah. So, uh, surprisingly enough today, Back to the Future. Oh. oh. Yeah. oh. Back, to, back to the Future what? Pop. Ooh. Pop toy. So, Back to the Future pop toy of uh, Dr. Emmett Brown. Loot Crate exclusive. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's going on my desk. I have uh, <laughs> quite a collection now. Mid chest tears in his eyes that you got this. Uh, he did. He's, he's got like I the, dressed he's, up in everything. <laughs> he's got like the German welding goggles, and he's got the. Uh, oh, he's got the. Uh, clamps. The, the to, clamps to yeah, harness to the, the car. power. So. 21 gigawatts. And then I've got Back to the Future 2 hoverboard. Scale oh, replica. Man. Now I'm jealous. Oh. Look at that a scale oh, replica man. of the hoverboard. You know what? On the, the box wasn't hovering. The only hovering one that's scale the... to is me. Like, by, I could write. That. By the way, <laughs> yeah. so no one knows this, but we're recording on the day that Michael J. Fox came to the future. Yeah. yeah. This is that day. So that's, that's what's so funny is we opened this. We yet. didn't even know. It is I saw him. Oh, you did? Yeah, we were watching Jaws 2000. <laughs> He was in the theater? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that rad? Oh, that That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I wanted a, the pip. It's got a... I got a pip. <laughs> it's got a merit base so you can see the underside. I like how it's actually Barbie size. Like, you can put a Barbie yeah. on it and it would be the scale. <laughs> you I'm should all, bring one of your Barbies in so I'm gonna put, try it. Yeah. I'm going to put Emmett Brown <laughs> Wait, on it. Mitch, I was talking to you. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then the Malibu looks, one. Bring the Malibu one. <laughs> and then it looks like I got a, a pin with the flux capacitor on it. Nice. But yeah. And a little booklet with all of their, you know, new stuff coming in in it and explaining yeah. all the stuff I've received. Why does the Loot Crate pin have the PC laptops mantra <laughs> on it? It says, we love you, right down the middle of it. Oh. You know what's funny? There's only going to be a few people that hear this that go, who the hell is PC laptops? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, no, they're not sponsoring. We're Sorry, Dan. Loot, loot Crate's all over We're this. starting local, right? <laughs> no, we're starting with Loot Crate. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want, I want more of these things for free. Oh, okay. um, it's beautiful. I, I almost got, got Loot Crate at one point, but like I like I saw like a, what everybody was getting, and it was like the fantasy one. I was like, that's my jam. And then I was yeah. like, I can't get it now. Everybody already got it. So I, oh, I've sweet. got an extra one I haven't opened at the house for months ago. You can have it. Is it's it a, a time capsule. capsule. <laughs> it's a time capsule. I have no idea what's in it, actually. So, I couldn't remember. out of time. Uh, license plate poster. Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't know this was all going to be Back to the Future stuff. I'm happy about this. <laughs> and then 
Oh, Dr. Who? I spoke too soon. It's Dr. Who. Oh, you did. You sound so soon. sad. Well, no, no. <laughs> oh, it's a sonic, sonic spoon. Sonic screwdriver spork. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's cool. That's rad. I'll take it. That's Dude, pretty cool. We're right outside of KFC. You better use that like, next time we go eat. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Like, I'm digging into the to the chicken with my real, like, metal sonic screwdriver spork. That's like a, that's like a legit spork. Yeah, I'm going to keep it in the box like because it has, like, a gun case. You can just carry that around in <laughs> your yeah. pocket. Yeah, like, like, people are like, hey, what's that bulge box? in your pocket? It's like, oh, <laughs> that's my metallic... Sonic screwdriver well, if sport. It were, like a clamshell <laughs> box, yeah. right? You can open it up. What is it? The, the box <laughs> turns into... It's like jewelry. <laughs> and it looks like the box turns into the stage that Bill and Ted give their final presentation on when they uh, when they pass their test. Oh, uh, that's the, awesome. Yeah. There's a little DeLorean on the side there. Oh, uh, yeah. A DeLorean <laughs> hidden behind the curtain. <laughs> I think it folds out so that... Yeah. And there's the TARDIS on this side of the floor. Yep. yep. Oh, so here, awesome. here's the thing. I, I didn't know what this one was, but I'm guessing it's a time machine themed because all these things are time machines. No. Okay. Yeah, Bill and yeah, Ted. Get back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. What? The, no, oh, sure. the TARDIS Whoa. isn't a time machine? The TARDIS is a time machine. Um, I guess the theme is time. Yeah. Time travel. Back and, in time. And uh, the Doctor has a sonic screwdriver, which is basically just... Anything. Okay, calm down. Whoa. This, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to open Pandora's box. Yeah, this is wow. awesome. <laughs> this is like going to rip my head off. <laughs> this is like Mitch's angriest. <laughs> Get educated. You're like, whoa. <laughs> Everybody let loose the Cubans angry. <laughs> well, this has like an official card yeah, it's pretty inside cool. the hoverboard box. Oh, that's cool. It's been officiated. Michael J. Fox. <laughs> That's not his signature. I had that a joke, but I'm not going to say it. This is Mr. Pelagy's Michael J. Fox. <laughs> yeah. I, I do and hope if, he writes in, though. Yeah. Steve, Steve lives at 1534 South. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been really awkward had you known my address and started spouting it out. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I did not know you were going to wear those boxes today. That's hilarious. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, is it about time to say goodbye? Up, so. Sing yeah, the, sing the ending theme song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, did you make that up? Now yeah. it's time to say goodbye to all our family. <laughs> Boy, that kind of sounded like the Mickey Mouse That's song. That's right. <laughs> yeah. P-I-X. We're not sponsored by Disney. Disney will swoop in if we get to the Shouldn't they? I thought they showed already. Yeah. I'm expecting a buyout any minute. Yeah. Well, cool. Look at how that goes. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. Ian, yeah. I'm glad you could be here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 I love it. He's, He's a fellow wanker now. So. <laughs> <laughs> he always has been, but it's <laughs> 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 <laughs>